So welcome to your own channel, Paper Money, and I am Vipul Gupta. Uh, this is your twenty-eighth lecture, right? So we had uh, started this lecture, or uh, so I'll just briefly, uh, because some uh, briefly just go through it once, once more, uh, because some of you uh, might be joining for the first time. Okay. So uh, this is uh, we are starting with the photolytic effect, and we'll be de describe what it is, and we'll see the plots, and then we'll solve some problems. Okay. So the photolytic effect is uh, what happens is you have a metal uh, surface. All right. Good evening, sir. Good evening. So there's a metal surface. All right. And uh, this uh, there is a radiation uh, falling on it, and there's a clean metallic surface, a smooth uh, one. Okay. So that the electrons are able to uh, are able to come out of it. All right. After this uh, incident, uh, ray is uh, incident on the uh, metal surface. So it was her like uh, it was first uh, observed by Hertz in 1887. All right. And in uh, Einstein in 1905, uh, he gave the theory, and uh, he himself was uh, not like uh, like Pl like Planck uh, who uh, gave theory for uh, blackboard radiation, uh, who used the value that E is equal to h nu. Uh, but uh, he was not convinced. Uh, what is uh, what is the fo this quantity? What is the photon? Uh, what was the idea behind that? So, but Einstein used it, used uh, that idea of photon e, e is equal to h nu in his uh, photoelectric paper. And uh, Planck, after finding Einstein's paper, he was uh, also convinced that there is something to this uh, quantity called photon. All right. So then, uh, that slowly the discoveries came along. Okay. That and they like people realized that scientific uh, photon is a uh, Like it's an important, uh, you can say, a, uh, like the particle nature of uh, the way uh, the light is uh, real. All right. So kinetic energy, uh, Einstein derived this thing that uh, the kinetic energy maximum uh, is equal to h nu minus or w. All right. Now uh, the w is the work function. All right. W is the work function, and uh, For the metal, and it is a property of the metal. All right, and it is given by. Uh, it's also written in terms of uh, h nu, where nu naught is the threshold frequency. All right, and um, the work function is defined as the minimum energy required to eject an electron from the metallic surface. Right <clears throat> now, nu naught is the threshold frequency, uh, which is uh, which is defined as the minimum frequency of light source required for photoelectric emission. All right. So so far we have uh, discussed uh, all these things in the previous meeting. Now uh, W is equal to h nu naught equal to h c by lambda naught and nu naught is equal to c by lambda naught. All right. Now lambda naught uh, is the threshold wavelength. Uh, now in this case the, it's a maximum wavelength. All right, because it's inversely related to uh, <coughs> this thing. Now this is the relation we have. Now uh, so this is the in maximum wavelength of light source required for photoelectric emission. Right. So and finally, we describe this phenomena as the emission of electron by uh, shining light. Okay, emission of electron by shining light on metal surface, and this is called the photoelectric effect. And the electrons emitted are called the photoelectrons. All right. So uh, we'll just go through uh, the experimental setup. This is where we left. All right. Now uh, this uh, it's a vacuum tube. All right, it's a vacuum tube, and uh, this uh, we allow the rays to fall on this. Okay, we allow the rays to fall on this. This is H nu, and uh, we have this. This uh, this is the vacuum tube. Okay, and we have this uh, ammeter here, and this is the collector plate. Collector plate, and the electrons are coming out of it. Okay. So the electrons are moving from this side to this side. Uh, now this one is the this one is the emitter plate. All right. Now this is a metallic surface which we are talking about in the like in the beginning, and this is the potential we are applying. All right. This is the variable potential we are applying. And so the electron goes from this plate to this plate. All right. Uh, like when once there is a see what what we have done here. We have connected this one, uh, this uh, 
the potential as if this is this is at a potential which is uh, negative and this is at the higher potential positive so when the uh, this um, light falls on this plate uh, electrons are emitted okay and electrons are getting repelled by this plate okay and this is uh, this is attracting the electrons so electrons are able to move from this plate to this plate when this enter the electron enters this circuit okay once it is uh, touches the collector plate it enters the circuit now this is uh, like this is the photo current which is going this side okay this is the photo current all right or we'll refer to as iph iph okay so now let's write it in terms of like a capital i this is capital i ph so whenever i'll use iph I understand that this is a photo current all right so we see a deflection in the ammeter and uh, some of you might have done this experiment in the uh, college itself all right now what happens is and uh, in that we had to find out the value of uh, the planck constant all right from the graph uh, now maximum uh, energy here is uh, this one so we wrote this thing ke max all right we already wrote this formula here now h nu minus work function is equal to h nu minus nu naught all right now in this case uh, uh, it's difficult to uh, guide the velocity of this electron all right by just observing on uh, through like we cannot observe this electron coming and going uh, like uh, hitting this plate right so what you can do is you can we'll try another method to find out what might be the how to measure the kinetic energy of this electron okay so what we'll do is we'll apply a negative potential we'll just reverse the potential voltage okay uh, this polarity of this voltage and we'll try to apply a voltage such that the electron does not reach this plate that means the electron has a zero velocity right so that will give us a measure of uh, what was the maximum kinetic energy available to the uh, electron so the next experimental setup is that we reverse the polarity of the uh, potential applied okay so this is a vacuum tube again now we are reversing the polarity and we are also trying to adjust it in such a way that we can we are changing the voltage in such a way so as to get a zero zero uh, for uh, the current all right in the circuit so in this case the direction is also now this direction is also in this direct the iph still is in this direction till is till it becomes zero in the circuit all right so this is everything is same this is the collect uh, this is the emitter plate and this is a collector plate all right everything remains the same just that this one is reversed this direction is reversed okay because we wanted to measure the electrons here the electron is going from this side to this side so we have reversed the direction and of the this is reversed okay this is reversed polarity in this case okay so in the, we'll try to get uh, such a voltage where because what will happen here this is at a positive potential now now this will uh, the the rays were hitting this surface right the h nu was here electrons are emitted but this this plate will attract the electron back and this plate will repel the electron now this is at negative right so ev every everything we are trying to get the electron to stop Okay, to 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 stop it from uh, coming out of uh, like uh, uh, to reaching this plate, right? So that will give us a measure of what is the maximum kinetic energy available to the electrons. Okay. So what happens is uh, you can you can look at it. The, the experiment can be thought of as, at as this. So in this case, let's let's uh, see the uh, the experiment graphically. What happens actually? Okay. so this is so this is say the iph axis the photo current we are seeing oh, what is the photo current and 
what is happening here is this is uh, zero uh, at this is at point zero and this is applied potential this is applied potential now uh, once we have fixed the intensity now we we are slowly discovering what is happening in the, from the experimental results all right we we'll, we'll see that uh, the intensity uh, controls the photo current all right so if the intensity is same like the intensity in this case means the number of photons so if the number of photons is constant the maximum intensity is the maximum photo current is available will be fixed for all voltages in the positive axis now if this is from 0 to some v right so in this case say we had some voltage initially so the well, like we can if we plot the graph let, let me use a different color so if you plot the graph so it will look like this so it is a straight line because already we are getting the maximum photo current allowed for a given intensity all right so once it so till here everything is fine like we get still get the current constant current now once it goes to zero and then reverses the polarity we reverse the polarity here now this is this side is a negative potential right now we are reversing this this is this was the first uh, experiment the first part of the experiment all right and this is the next part where we reverse the polarity so what we do is we get we start uh, getting a reduced current slowly the the most energetic electrons also fail to reach the other side all right so this point where the the photo current becomes zero okay this is the stopping potential all right so this at this point you can see that iph is zero iph becomes zero that means no electron is reaching the other the this collector plate all right now this what this one is the maximum photo current max photo current all right now in this case we can we as now we can conclude that ke max ke max is equal to e vs right we know that how, how to calculate uh, the energy of a, a, a particle charged particle moving between two plates with the potential difference of v so that is ev right in this case evs okay so we get the relationship between this and we don't need to track each element uh, track track each uh, electron to get the kinetic energy of the electron we can instead apply this method all right so now let's see uh, some of the things now we already described what is happening here uh, you don't need to write it down again and uh, so we just uh, wrote every like uh, everything we have defined here now this is the stopping potential okay this this is the stopping potential all right at this potential the current in the circuit the photo current becomes zero at this potential photo current becomes zero all right means no no electrons reaches the uh, collector plate and hence there is no uh, photo current okay okay sir okay. yeah so let's uh, see what were the uh, experimental results what were the experimental results let's see let's uh, briefly see them experimental results all right so this was actually uh, uh, this uh, experiment this experiment was uh, i just for current record cannot recall his name uh, he uh, did this experiment uh, because uh, actually he was the inventor of cathode ray tube but ranjan was awarded uh, the Uh, the no first nobel prize for uh, using the cathode ray to discover for the discovery of x uh, x rays all right and uh, he then tried to find out that person i i just uh, skip his name from like and you does it huh millikan not not millikan uh, uh 
he was uh, very much opposed to uh, uh, einstein getting a, a, a nobel prize because of him uh, einstein got it so late and that too he received it for photoelectric effect not for general relativity even though his general relativity theory was proved correct all right so uh, there was a lot of uh, there's also a politics a lot of politics in science right now i, I just forgot it. he did the experiment for this and he also received the nobel prize all right for his uh, like the experimental results of uh, co experimentally quantifying the results of photoelectric effect okay whatever it is uh, <clears throat> that is history now if uh, what what happens is if the new of the like let's write this down so if the new of incident of incident light of incident light is smaller than smaller than the threshold frequency threshold frequency all right of the metal of the metal then no electron can be emitted can be emitted so this is not theoretical these are the experimental results we'll see how it matches with the theory no electron can be emitted emitted uh, regardless regardless of the intensity intensity all right of radiation okay so <clears throat> then we have uh, say we have the surface here now let me write it just uh, give a illustrate instead of okay let me write it down uh, drawing is also cumbersome so uh, the electrons are ejected now there's another observation electrons are ejected from the metal surface from the metal surface almost instantaneously almost instantaneously instantaneously all right so the order is within nano nanosecond within 1 nanosecond all right so this is the order of the time duration or uh, interval uh, however weak be the source all right however weak be the source now it doesn't matter weak weak means uh, see weak source weak source we mean in this case the intensity is low low intensity all right low intensity and this also means a low number of lower number of uh, photons all right and if you have a strong source strong source when we talk to speak that okay there is a strong source we we mean that it's high intensity or it is the other meaning is the higher high uh, number of photons a large number of photons i can say number of photons all right so this is the terminology now the third point is okay third point is that you have at any frequency above nu not okay so if you have say if a uh, nu not like nu is greater than nu not so the emission takes place now the the number of uh, at this case the number of uh, electrons the number of electrons emitted okay number of okay. 
So the number of electrons emitted All right, uh, this increases with increases with increase in intensity of increases with intensity of light. Intensity of light. All right, but does not depend. But does not depend on the light frequency. All right, but does not depend on the light frequency. Now, in this case, uh, the last point, last observation, which is there, that the maximum kinetic energy depends on, so Ke max, Ke max depends so Ke max is the maximum kinetic energy of uh, electrons. So let me write it down. Maximum kinetic energy of photoelectrons. All right. Uh, ejected from, so let me write it in bracket. Ejected from from uh, metal sur the metal surface depends on depends on uh, only on the frequency the frequency or wavelength all right wavelength but not on the but not on the intensity of the beam. Okay. So <clears throat> the kinetic energy. Uh, so these are the all the observations. Now, uh, this was not been able, like nobody was able to explain it using the wave theory. All right. Then Einstein came along and he uh, like used this thing from which Planck gave first that E is equal to h nu. And he was able to like derive all the things uh, which made uh, like all the experimental results were satisfied. Okay, so uh, we can see that uh, from the if, from the paper of Einstein, we we can see that if uh, in the formula for uh, this thing kinetic energy max, uh, if we put nu is less than nu naught, we can see that kinetic energy uh, is less than zero. Okay, which is not possible. Okay, that is, explains why there is no emission. All right, uh, no photoelectrons emitted. No photoelectrons emitted. No photoelectrons emitted. All right, and then you have if nu is greater than nu naught. Now in this case, we have kinetic energy, which is greater than zero. Th uh, theoretically, we have in this case, uh, photoelectrons are emitted. So this explains the very first point. Photoelectrons are emitted. All right. And uh, we can also write this down as the formula for Ke max in terms of uh, wavelength. OK, so this is h nu minus nu naught. This is equal to hc by hc 1 by lambda minus 1 by lambda naught all right now let's see the plots of the uh, whatever uh, we have uh, the relations whatever we have here so the plots the first one plots okay uh, so the first one is uh, k max k max versus uh, nu all right. Uh, if you see the equation here, so this is K max is equal to H nu minus H nu naught. All right. Why? Now this is of the form what? This is of the form of a straight line. All right. Now if you compare them, now the y-axis is the kinetic energy here, K max, 
and the edge is the slope here. Okay, so the slope is the edge. H and then X is the new, all right. And C in this case is minus H new naught. All right, so we have the correspondence here, all the correspondence lined up. Now, if we plot this, this will be a straight line, okay. Now this is new and then we have this line uh, like this. So this will be, we won't be able to see this plot, uh, the, the, the dotted one. This is the plot we'll be obtaining. If if you have done the experiment, you'll for the stopping potential case. So this will have the same uh, graph as the stopping potential. All right. So this is uh, minus h nu naught, and this the slope here is slope of this graph will give you the value of h. All right. And this point is the threshold frequency. All right. Now. Next is, next graph is the KE max versus intensity. Now we see the KE max does not depend on intensity, right? Means the number of photons uh, like incident. So KE max uh, versus intensity. So this, uh, once the emission occurs, the now the in, after that, uh, it does not depend on the frequency, but it, uh, it also, as uh, this, uh, this K max does not never depends on intensity. All right. So this is, if you draw the graph now, this will be a, of course, a straight line uh, parallel to x axis. Okay. So this is the plot. This is uh, intensity. Sorry, not new. This is intensity. All right. This is number of photons actually number of photons in the incident beam. And uh, this one is the uh, straight line. Okay, so the K max is unaffected by the number of photons incident. Okay. Now, let's talk about, now we are, uh, in this case, we are fixing the, inten like in this case, we are fixing the uh, frequency here. When we're changing the intensity, we are, fixing the uh, frequency here, okay? So this is for a fixed frequency, for a fixed frequency. All right. Because if you change the frequency, the kinetic energy max will also change. Now let's see another graph, which is the photo current IPH versus applied potential. Okay, this one I, we already draw, we have drawn it once, uh, but let's see uh, what happens if we change the intensity and then plot it. So this is the applied potential versus photo current, All right? Now if you, See the graph here. So this is IPH. All right. Now in this case, uh, we had already seen one of the graphs. Okay, so you have a say you have intensity at this level uh, because of which the maximum current is fixed at this point. Okay, this is not curvy like this. It's a straight line. Okay, so now in this case, uh, it goes to uh, this point. And then if you increase, change the intensity of this. So this was say I1, uh, let's say increase the uh, number of photons. So this becomes, again, it comes down to this point. This is say I, I2. And if you have another one, okay. So let's say I3, they're changing the number of uh, uh, photons falling on the surface and we still get this point. Now, what is, why is this happening that all of them are coming down to this single potential? What we are not changing? If you see this, that this is related to uh, the Ke max here. Okay, so this is Ke max. Now in this case, this potential, this, uh, this will depend on the metal, right? This is a property of the metal. Metal you are not changing here. Okay, you're not changing the metal. So 
it will remain same all right and uh, you are not changing the new also all right so in this case uh, the stopping potential remains the same so in this uh, what we have here is i3 greater than i2 and i1 so the frequency actually sorry i, I just mixed it mixed everything up uh, because of the frequency the frequency is not changing we are not changing the frequency okay we are changing the intensity so these i's are intensity these are intensities so we are keeping new fixed keeping new fixed all right sorry this is not a property of the metal all right uh, sorry for that uh, i'm mm, just by mistake told you that so this is uh, the because of the frequency is fixed okay so we have a fixed uh, this stopping potential all right now uh, this is the applied potential applied potential axis all right now if we have uh, let's see other graph if we plot ih versus applied potential okay other graph where we change the uh, keeping the maximum number of uh, the, the keeping the number of uh, photons fixed okay we change the uh, frequency so what happens in this case all right so this is we'll have we'll keep the number of photons fixed okay so that keeps the maximum uh, this uh, maximum for photo current fixed all right now this graph uh, we change the different we change it for frequent different frequencies all right so we'll have different stopping potentials all right so this is all right this will this will be a different uh this is v say v1s v2s v3s okay so this is new 3 new 2 new 1 all right so this is zero this is applied potential all right now in this case we are keeping the maximum this photo current fixed okay im is the max photo current max photo current all right here new 3 is greater than new 2 is greater than new 1 okay now the final thing uh, which is the stopping potential versus stopping potential versus frequency all right now in this case uh, in the graph if you look at it so we have ke max ke max is equal to e vs this is equal to h nu minus h nu not all right so if you uh, pick up vs uh, relation so we'll have h by e nu h by e nu not all right so this is the relation uh, now it's also a straight line all right we, uh, so this will just that the slope will change and the intercepts will change so this is the this is the frequency axis this is the stopping potential axis so in this case you will see the slope here is in this equation the slope comes out to be h by e all right so if you plot them it will also be a straight line okay just that this uh, the slope will change and this is minus h the intercept is minus h by e nu this is this what this point is nu is equal to nu not and this one is the slope which is equal to h by e all right so this is the plot for the stopping potential all right now if you change uh, the frequency here you get uh, now at every point you see that you get different potentials all right different stopping potentials now let's uh, solve from uh, some problems from previous year okay 
Now, in this case, you have, uh, now the question is, the question says that uh, light described by equation, okay, sorry, light, light described by, described by uh, the equation, all right, E is equal to, now let me write it here. E is equal to 90 volt per meter, okay? And this is given to be sine of, this is sine, and this one is next, the value is given here as 6.28 into 10 to the power 15, okay, uh, per second, T plus, sine, this one is 12.56 and 10 to power 15 per second, all right. And uh, this one is, so we get this, this is the light description which we have in terms of electric field is incident, is incident uh, on a metal surface on a metal surface, all right. And uh, the work function, the work function of the metal, work function of the metal is, metal is 2.0 EV. Okay, the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons will be maximum kinetic energy, kinetic energy of for the photoelectrons will be okay <clears throat> the options given are a this is 2.414 ev b this is 4.28 ev c is given to be 6.28 ev and d this is 12.56 EV. Okay, so this was a question from Jam. Okay, Jam. This is an old, very old question. But still, you can, the concepts remain the same. All right. So, just tell me uh, how will you solve it? So you have been given a form uh, where you can see that if you have uh, this, uh, we can represent uh, electromagnetic radiation in terms of electric field, which is E naught sine omega t, okay? And in some cases we'll have some phase uh, factor, phase constant, all right? So I'm not keeping it here, it's not shown here also. So if you compare them, we have two omegas. If you, if you compare that, we have a superposition of two radiations, we have two omegas. One is, so comparing this with uh, say, Let's write it like this, omega one, and this is sine uh, omega two. All right, so this is a superposition, all right. So two, two, radiations, uh, two radiations of different frequencies are uh, superposed and sent on the metal surface. So omegas are there, which is omega one is equal to 6.28 into, uh, this is uh, 10 to the power 15 per second. Okay, and omega two is, equal to, this is equal to 12.56 uh, into 10 to the power, min sorry, not minus, 15 per second, 15 per second. All right, so we have two frequencies here. Now, we are, they are talking about, now work function is also given to you. Work function is uh, 2.0 uh, 2 EV, all right. Uh, 
Now it says that the maximum kinetic energy of the photon is. So the maximum kinetic energy, we see, we know that this kinetic energy maximum is related to uh, the incident uh, frequency, uh, the frequency of the incident light, which is h mu minus uh, w. All right. Now the maximum energy will uh, maximum can. Now if you increase nu, this energy, this this is fixed, right? This is fixed. So if you change nu, if you increase nu. The difference between the h nu and work function increases. That means you have a higher kinetic energy. All right. So, so maximum kinetic energy will correspond to maximum Ke max, maximum Ke max will correspond to will correspond to max highest uh, frequ frequency light. Highest frequency, highest omega, you can say. Omega or frequency. Okay, we know the relationship between omega and frequency. So omega is two pi by two pi nu, right? Or we can write nu is equal to omega by two pi. All right. So if we use this one, so what is which one is the maximum one? So in this case, we'll use this one because this is the maximum uh, frequency omega available. All right. So if we can get the maximum new year, uh, so we can write down K e max. K e max is equal to six point six two six into ten power minus thirty four, and uh, multiplied by omega two by two pi minus two. Now this is an EV, and these are in uh, SI unit. So you can just change it. So in this case, we we see that this uh, omega one, omega two is greater than omega one, which means uh, let us write it somewhere here that omega uh, two is greater than omega one, which implies that nu two is greater than nu one. So uh, the maximum kinetic energy will correspond to. New equal to now this is the new is equal to new two, all right. Where a new two is uh, we have already will will calculate it here. Just put it put the values so six point six two six the h value, okay minus thirty four. Now this one is twelve point five six into ten to power uh, fifteen, all right. Ten to power fifteen divided by. Now, in this case, uh, let's take it to be two into three point one four. Okay. Now, if you solve this whole thing, all right, and uh, put it into EVs. Okay, I, I already have the answer here, so I'll put the answer. So you have to change it to EV. EV this this situation, this all everything here. Okay. So that will come out to be uh, eight point two seven EV minus two EV. All right. This will give you. Equal to six point two seven eV. All right, so this is the answer. So this is around uh, six point two eight. So this is the answer to this question. All right, C option is correct. C is correct. All right. <clears throat> Now I hope everybody is getting this answer. Now this one was in SI unit. Okay, we just converted into eV. Uh, this uh, I'm not converting it here. All right. This is in joule. The uh, this unit of uh, h is here in joules again. All right. So I think you have to divide it by uh, this thing. Uh, this one eV is how much? One eV is one point six into ten power minus nineteen joules, right? One point six into ten power minus nineteen uh, joules. So if you write down one joule, so this will be around one point six two five into ten power nineteen uh, eV, right? So you you just uh, multiply like put it here. You multiply by this number. Okay, you'll get this. You multiply by this number, or you can divide also. Okay, so I hope you can do it, do this calculation. All right, just use this thing. This was in joule, right? This this energy was in joule. So uh, the next question is. next question says the electric field component electric field component all right 
uh, of an electromagnetic wave electromagnetic radiation of an electro magnetic uh, radiation varies with time as varies with time as e is equal to okay again there's electric field given to you here a cos omega t plus sin omega t dot cos omega not t all right now where a is a constant where a is a constant all right and the values of omega and omega not are the values of of omega and omega not are uh, 1 into 10 to power 15 per second and 5 into 10 to power 15 per second all right respectively respectively okay now this radiation falls on a metal of work function 2 ev this radiation this radiation falls on a metal a metal of work function of work function all right 2 ev now the maximum kinetic energy the maximum kinetic energy maximum kinetic energy in ev in ev of photoelectrons of photoelectrons is okay so this is point uh, 64 b is option is uh, 1.3 Zero. C option is one point seven zero. D option is one point nine five. All right. So you can see this thing that uh, it's a similar problem than the previous one. Okay, it talks about the maximum kinetic energy. Now, this is not the maximum kinetic energy among the maximum kinetic energy of the electrons. Okay. So uh, tell me, uh, just think about it, and let's start the solution. I'll have some water in the meantime. So, how will you do it? How many frequencies do you have here? Okay, this is a problem from Jam two thousand thirteen. This is a problem from Jam two thousand thirteen. So, how many frequencies are there? Two. Two frequency. I'm sorry to say, it's you are incorrect. Is this waveform? Is this electric field written in uh, terms of superposition? there is of course a superposition but then the second term is contains a product all right so you have to get rid of that product to see the actual number of frequencies available so if you write down this e is a 
cos omega t plus sin omega t and then we have cos omega naught t all right it but it apparently looks like we have only frequencies omega and omega naught which because why we have been given these two values but there is a catch here that this is not in the form of super complete like there it's not the superposition of two waves there is a superposition of three waves so just apply our very old friend from 9th and 10th standard trigonometry okay so what do you get here this is sin a cos b right so sin a plus b plus sin a minus sin b sorry not sin b a minus b so i hope everybody remembers this friend all right so this is a cos omega t plus we'll have this is sin now if you take this common so we have omega plus omega not plus this is a, uh, this will also be half sin omega minus omega not t so now tell me how many frequencies are there you have three frequencies three sir yeah so you have one one wave is this one this is one radiation this is another radiation of another frequency this is another radiation of another frequency so we have uh, three frequencies here one is this omega the other one is omega plus omega not and the third one is omega minus omega not all right so uh, so this this is how uh, a simple problem which we have done in uh, fodor trick effect in 12th standard it can be made complex during the exam okay it's not complex at all but you have to think it through okay they will try to confuse you with all the things uh, they can find now you have this uh, result now just tell me uh, the the max and there will be 3 ke max right so corresponding to this you'll have 1 ke max ke max you'll have there's another ke max from here okay so all the electrons will come out like uh, we, we have electrons for all this ke max we have 3 ke maxes here we are corresponding to each fact, uh, uh, frequencies okay so what will happen is uh, in this case So uh, now, in this case, what will be, which one will be the maximum? Say, let's write it to be this is one, this is two, this is three. So in this case, which will have the maximum uh, value? Second one. Two will have two, sir. Okay, one. Uh, so let's uh, write this one as this. So we'll have all the electrons. Like three, three frequencies are available in same beam. We'll have uh, kinetic energy. Uh, all these kinetic energies will be there. but the we are been asked about the maximum kinetic energy among this so the, the, this there is also catch everybody remembers the ke max as the maximum kinetic energy but ke max is the maximum kinetic energy for a given frequency all right now here there are three frequencies so we have to find out the maximum of that maximum all right uh, maximum kinetic energies uh, so in this case we will have h nu minus h nu not so in this case let's talk it let's say this is nu2 okay so we have we can write this now we are already know uh, here what to write so this is uh, omega omega by uh, 2 pi omega 2 all right so uh, minus h nu not and h nu not is already known so let's write it the, to be omega uh, w okay so this is the w now w is given to be 2 ev i hope yeah yes and uh, New two, okay. New two will correspond to omega two by two pi, which is new two is given to be five. Uh, now in this case, omega plus omega naught, okay, by two pi. Okay, so we'll substitute all the values. We'll substitute all the values. Now this is six point six two six into ten power minus thirty four, and let's convert it into eV. So this is point six two five into ten power. 19 okay so this becomes an ev and this is 2 into 3.14 approximately so or we could directly use h by 2 pi as 1.05 uh, right no it doesn't matter right so we have this thing uh, now what is the omega here 
omega is omega plus omega naught. So omega is one into ten power fifteen, and omega naught is five into ten power fifteen. So if we write this down, so this is one plus five into ten power fifteen. All right, this gives us the omega minus. This is two eV. So everything is eV, uh, both the side, both the terms. This is this is an eV. All right. So if you solve them, so can somebody give me the answer here? I have not calculated. Three point nine five. Sorry. A one point nine five is the answer. Three point nine five minus two. Three point nine five minus two. All right. So eV. This is a one point nine five eV. So I hope this is uh, is this the correct answer here? This should be the correct answer, I guess. This is yeah. All right. So so this is the correct answer here. I hope everybody is getting the same answer. Okay. So you have to be a bit careful about these things. Now let's do do another problem. Okay. So this is from a question again from Jam. Okay. Now this one is uh, in a photoelectric effect uh, experiment. In a photoelectric experiment, photo electric uh, experiment, all right. Now let's keep this for homework. Okay, everybody can do it. This one. So this is so both sodium, both sodium. Uh, work function is given to be work function. Is equal to two point three eV and uh, tungsten tungsten is equal to uh, the work function is given to be work function is equal to four point five eV. All right, now. metals are were illuminated metals were illuminated all right by an ultraviolet light by an ultraviolet light of same wavelength of same wavelength okay if the stopping potential for tungsten if the stopping potential for tungsten for tungsten is uh, is measured to be is measured to be okay is measured to be 1.8 volt now the value of stopping potential the value of stopping potential potential uh for sodium will be for sodium will be okay this is uh, dash volt so this is it jam uh it jam this is 2016 so take this as a homework okay it it's not uh, difficult the answer will be uh, in this case it will be answer let me write down the answer for you this is answer is 4 okay 4 volt so you can check it so uh let's start with another topic which is 
the quantum scattering okay Now, the quantum scattering is another experiment uh, <clears throat> where uh, the for the uh, the particle nature of light was used to explain the observations in the experimental uh, setup. Okay, so for Compton, uh, Compton gave the theory. Uh, All right, so this is another experiment where uh, like MSc entrance exams take questions from. All right, so what happens in this case? Let's see. So we have electron here. We have electron here, okay, which is uh, sitting uh, here as a target. Okay, you have a target electron. There's a target and the electrons are there. And then we have a ray which is uh, the, in this case, we are using X-ray. Now the X-ray is, so this is X-ray. Okay, now this order of this X-ray is, we know it's in the range of kilo electron volt, the energy order. Okay, now this hits the electron. Okay, this hits the electron. So this is this is the ray coming in. Now this is uh, now the the momentum of the photon uh, is given by h nu by c, which is h by lambda. Okay, so this hits the electron, and after hitting the electron, so this is say uh, we need a dotted line here just to show the angles. So what happens when this ray hits this electron and then again scatters out this way? So this is a scattered photon and this makes an angle, it's a theta. Okay, this is a scattered photon. Okay, now this, uh, and there is the electron scattered, scatters along this direction. So this is the electron scattering here, recoil electron, recoil electron. All right. Now the energy here, now since the energy scale involved here, now this is, this was initially at rest. Okay. We already know uh, how to uh, decide which experiment is relativistic and which experiments are non-relativistic. How do we do that? We compare the energy uh, in energies involved. So if this X-ray is of the order of kiloelectron volt, okay, sometimes uh, higher than that. Now, what is the energy or what is the rest mass energy of the electron here? Uh, it's at rest, so the rest mass energy of the electron is of the order of 0.5 kilo electron volt, right? So that means uh, this experiment, this, uh, this is higher than this value, okay? So the experiment is uh, a relativistic phenomena, okay? So sometimes you, it's asked that, uh, like whether the quantum scattering is relativistic or non-relativistic. So the quantum scattering is a relativistic phenomena because of the energies involved. Okay. I had already explained to you this, how to decide for in the uh, De Broglie, uh, De Broglie uh, lecture, how to decide which experiment, like whether to do a relativistic calculation or to do a non-relativistic calculation. So this, this phenomena is treated as a relativistic phenomena. Okay. So in this case, the energy involved is H by H, this is H nu dash. So that there's a change in uh, frequency or, or the lambda. Okay. Now this was not being explained by the wave theory. Wave theory says, okay, the, whatever the lambda was, it will remain the same. Uh, but in this case, uh, after uh, Compton uh, thought of this idea of treating the photon, uh, treating the light as a, a stream of photons, okay, the particle nature of light, uh, he was able to explain the results. And it was very close to the experimental uh, data. Okay, so this is the total energy of a relativistic particle, right? This is the energy of the electron here. Now the at rest mass, this is the energy of this, uh, the rest mass energy of the electron is, we can write E 
equal to m e c square, which is around five one one. No, or I, I mistakenly said uh, 0.5 uh, keV. It was 0.5 MeV, right? Uh, actually, this is 5.11 keV. There was a mistake in the beginning, right? I, instead of MeV, I said keV. So this is also of that order, okay? So in this case, we can write this as so P pH, okay? This is equal to H nu dash by C is equal to H by lambda dash okay so this is the whole idea of the uh, the experiment as a theory uh, we'll not into the experimental details uh, we'll just focus on the theory part okay the calculation part now uh, how do you define this uh, scattering okay now it is the scattering it is the scattering It is a scattering of a photon of a photon by a charged particle by a charged particle, usually an electron, usually an electron. Okay, this is usually an electron which we talk about where where the energy where the energy of photon where the energy of photon decreases okay uh, or we can say the wavelength increases wavelength increases All right now uh, theta now theta on phi could be changed interchange uh, it could be written in a different way in the ex uh, question paper so you have to uh, you, you cannot stick to this notation every time okay you keep this in mind uh, as per your choice but uh, try to follow what the question says okay so this in this case we are taking theta to be the scattering angle of photon and we are taking this this is as a scattering phi as a scattering angle of recall electron okay so this is theta and phi for this. It's not a standard notation. Okay, it could change. It could be reversed. Okay, it could be phi here, theta here. So according to the question, you make sure that you are on the same page with the question. Now, what does what did Compton assume? There was Compton assumed some uh, the assumptions were made. Okay, uh, that is important. Now assumptions are made uh, also to satisfy the uh, like uh, to make sure that it. It satisfies the physical conditions. Uh, okay, so X-ray. He assumed that the X-ray radiation consists of consists of stream of photons. Okay. So uh, okay, uh, I, let, tell me, guys. If, if, like, uh, if I extend beyond four thirty, is it okay with you, so that I can finish Compton scattering today itself? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No problem. Okay. okay. Because why to live in the mid, mid between, right? So it will take hardly, I think, more to 10, 15, 15, 20 minutes more than the usual time we have here. Okay. So each photon, each photon has energy. Each photon has energy. Now let me tell you one thing about these two experiments which we did, the photoelectric effect and the Compton scattering. These are, this theory, whatever I'm telling you is only focused on your exams, okay? If you will get into the depth of it, it's a very huge subject in itself, okay? Even the photoelectric effect is also a huge subject, okay, to study. Compton scattering is similarly a huge subject, okay? If you get into the details of what is happening inside the experiment as well as the theory, theory is also detailed. If you look at look up the paper by Compton, it's a very uh, like it's I think a 25, 26 page pages thick paper. All right, so uh, no no book also no book covers those things. Uh, there might be textbook, but which is beyond our syllabus. Okay, so uh, don't think that this is only the uh, you, this is only the part of uh, this is just a part of it which we will be using our in our exam. That's it. All right. So this is not the complete, uh, everything is not uh, uh, given to you in all detail, okay. 
we need to have a basic understanding of the phenomena that's it okay in fact whatever we are learning in quantum mechanics uh, in any subject uh, at our still level right now we are limited to uh, a lot of things okay now each uh, so each photon has energy this uh, we already know the photon the momentum is considered to be this uh, like you, if you take e is equal to h nu then the momentum comes down to this thing okay so uh, now if each each uh, we say that each uh, photon each photon interacts with an individual electron interacts with uh, with an individual electron because uh, i'll tell you one example why i say that uh, this uh, like there are lots of things we have uh, other than this thing because the photoelectric effect is sometimes uh, like they say that okay this uh, uh, the range is of the order of electron volt okay ha huh. photoelectric effect is relativistic or non relativistic uh, i already gave you the answer okay tell me photoelectric effect is non relativistic or relativistic non relativistic all right but uh, no in some cases it might not be okay so uh, but in your case you can say non relativistic because the energy is involved in your case is of the order of electron volt okay it's not it's very very less than the uh, uh, rest mass energy of the electron okay uh, but uh, you'll see that if you look up a photoelectric effect in, uh, in say wikipedia or something uh, you'll see that the energy ranges are also of the order of uh, which is more than the rest mass energy of the electron so in some cases uh, photoelectric effect might be non relativistic okay so the calculations will change there uh, so just an example now in this case uh, the collision between electron the collision between so you can remember uh, this thing uh, I'll, i'll just write it down somewhere that quantum scattering is relativistic and photoelectric effect is not relativistic okay because of the energy is involved i didn't write it down so the collision between electron and photon is elastic photon is elastic and relativistic and relativistic all right and one more thing is that we are also considering that the electron is free and stationary okay this makes the calculation simpler but let's see why it was assumed so <clears throat> the assumption was made that the energy of the because this assumption was made uh, it simplifies the calculations of course but the assumption is also correct because the energy of the x rays is very much higher very much higher than the than the binding energy binding energy of electron in the metal in the metal uh, one can assume that one can assume that the electron is free one the, and I assume the electron is to be free okay so the binding energy is of the order of ev and the kinetic energy of x rays are of the order of kilo electron volt 1000 times greater than that so we are it's safe to assume that uh, like the electron is free okay and apply now what we'll do is we'll apply a uh, constant uh, conservation of momentum and uh, because it's elast elastic uh, collision all right and uh, we'll use the relativistic uh, formulation of energy and momentum so applying we'll not solve it we'll just state the uh, basic uh, first few lines of the calculation and then move on to the conclusion okay now conservation of momentum applying conservation of momentum 
Now, this is a very easy calculation. If you uh, just follow it, uh, this, uh, I think it will take around 10 lines to solve it. Okay, no whole calculation. Applying conservation of momentum along x and y axis. Okay, so what we have here. So if you see the diagram, if you have it in front of you, so you can just write down the momentum in each case. Okay, we have the momentum of the photon. So along x axis, uh, if you see the figure, you can write it down directly from there, along x axis. What do you have? You have momentum, the initial momentum, plus the momentum of the electron is equal to h nu dash c. Now this is a component along x axis for the momentum of the photon. And this is the component of the, uh, now this p, I'm taking it to be the momentum of the uh, electron. So this is the momentum of electron. Momentum of electron. Okay. Now, if you rearrange this thing, if you rearrange this, so you'll get p cos phi is equal to h c by uh, h nu by c minus h nu dash by c cos theta. So this is say equation one. And if you write down uh, this uh, momentum conservation along y-axis, what do you get? So initially along y-axis is zero, zero. Now this will have h nu dash by c sine theta minus p sine phi. Okay, so if you rearrange, you'll get p sine phi, p sine phi is equal to h nu dash by c sine theta. So this is say equation two. All right, now the, it's very like, you can just uh, solve this thing uh, and you can square and you can just square and add them up, you'll get P square, okay. And uh, so I'll not solve that, okay. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just go to the direct result. Let, let, let me, okay, let's write down this one state this time. Squaring one and uh, two and adding them. Okay, so if we add them, so what we'll get is p square is equal to h nu by c minus h nu dash by c. Okay. This will give us uh, cos theta whole square plus h square nu dash dash by c square sine square theta. Okay, so this is this is what we have here, p square is there. Now we have to get uh, p from this thing, the energy relation, and we'll just substitute them and we'll, get, we'll just give, get the uh, final result. So what we'll have is, uh, let's write down the ap ap applying uh, the energy conservation, applying the conservation of energy. Conservation of, of energy. All right. So we have this thing that uh, this will be h nu plus me, the initial energy. And there's a final energy, which is, there's the initial energy, there's the final energy plus p square, c square plus me c4. So in this case, we'll just replace p square. Okay, we'll just take the squares and then reduce this thing uh, so that we equate to, so if we if you square this thing, okay, if you square this, so what will you get? So this will be p square c square is equal to h nu plus m e c square plus, oh, sorry, not plus, is minus h nu dash square minus m e square c is four. Okay, this is fourth equation. And then by equation, by equation three, by equation three, we can write, if you rearranged here the square C here, so we can write P square, C square is equal to H nu minus H nu dash cos theta whole square plus H square nu dash square sine square theta. So this is the fifth equation. Now just equate for five, uh, equate 
four and five, and you can just simplify it further. Create four and five and simplify. Okay, simplifying further, we'll get this result. Okay, we'll, we'll get this result. So the result comes out to be this. This is new minus new dash is equal to h new new dash by mec square. Okay, and this is one minus cos theta. Now, if we convert this, if you convert this equation to in terms of lambda and lambda dash, you'll get this. So we define this thing as uh, we write delta lambda, which is lambda minus lambda, lambda dash minus lambda. Okay, equal to h by uh, m e c minus one minus cos theta. Now this thing is called the Compton shift. Okay, this is known as Compton shift. All right, so you can uh, just put uh, four, uh, four and five equal and thus rearrange the equations, you'll get this result, all right. So this is very important for you to remember this result. Okay. This you should keep in mind how these lambdas are related. Now, lambda dash is the fin final wavelength of the final, uh, it's the scattered uh, radiation, and this is the incident radiation lambda. So, in this case, uh, now this is this is important, okay? I'm telling you repeatedly. Now, what happens is this, uh, sorry, this lambda, this quantity, h by m naught mec, this is h by mec, okay? This is called lambda c is called Compton wavelength. Now in this case, we are using a electron. So this is a Compton wavelength corresponding to the electron. Now if you change the, if you talk about a different particle, uh, it will have, uh, it will change accordingly, all right. Now for electron, for electron, okay. Lambda c is given by or lambda c is given by if you put the values everything here uh, 2.43 into 10 to the power minus 12 meter or we can say that this is in picometer to 2.43 picometer so pm is picometer all right now you should keep this in mind okay this comes in handy while doing some calculations all right Now the maximum Compton shift, what will have, what will be the maximum Compton shift in this case? For maximum Compton shift, maximum Compton shift, all right, we have Delta Lambda is max is equal to theta, which is pi. Okay, because we can see the from the formula itself, how can you get the maximum value of this delta lambda? If we have cos theta equal to minus one, okay, this will have give us two. So this is the maximum value of this uh, this numerator, all right, one minus cos theta. So if we put theta equal to pi, so this gives us uh, the maximum value as lambda c uh, one minus cos pi, which is two lambda c, right? cos pi is minus one, let me write it down here. So this is lambda c, one minus, minus one. So this gives us two lambda c, which is, if you uh, write this down, so delta lambda max is equal to uh, 4.86, 4.86 picometer, all right. So you can also keep this in mind, keep this in mind. All right, now this, this can phenomena has some name where we see that the uh, at theta is equal to pi, this phenomena, this phenomena is called, is called backscattering, backscattering 
and that is the scattered photon scattered photon retraces retraces the path of the incident of the incident uh, photon all right <clears throat> so uh, now in this case uh, for now for we can also do this experiment for visible light but the thing is the shift is very small compared to what we observe in case of uh, uh, experiment where we do it using the x-rays so for visible light the compton shift the compton shift all right is uh, around is around 0.01% okay of the incident wavelength of the incident incident wavelength so the shift is very uh, like insignificant now the kinetic energy in this case for uh, x rays for x rays this uh, which is a wavelength of the order of uh, 0.1 nanometer okay uh, the compton shift the compton shift which is a delta lambda is several percent is several percent of the incident radiation of the incident radiation wavelength incident wavelength all right so that is why we use this uh, x rays and the kinetic energy the final point is the kinetic energy the ke gained gained by the recoiled electron recoiled electron is equal to equal to gain equal to energy lost by the equal to energy lost by the photon okay so in this case the photons are changed here okay the photon changes here it's not usually mentioned in, in the books it's rarely found in some good books uh, which is dedicated for the compton scattering part now this photon here changes it, it is temporarily absorbed by the target uh, this electron and then released again okay so there's a temporary absorption here and the photon frequency changes so these are two different photons okay because photon is defined by the frequency if the frequency changes the photon changes All right now let's do some problems uh, so this is a question which is really good uh, now this so you have to remember all whatever points i have not given you just remember those things you will be able to solve all the problems okay uh, if you understand them properly now this is a question from jam again a photon of frequency nu now there is a question here a photon of frequency of frequency nu strikes an electron of mass m an electron of mass m okay initially at rest initially at rest uh, after scattering at an angle phi after scattering at an angle phi the photon loses half of its energy the photon loses half of its 
energy. Okay, if if the photon, if, sorry, if the electron recoils recoils at an angle theta at an angle theta, which of the following, which of the following which of the following is R uh, true. So this is a MSQ type problem. So the options given to you are, so let me write down, this is IIT jam 2017. So options are as follows, cos phi is equal to one minus mc square by h nu, all right. And then we have the b option as, b option is given to be sine theta, sine theta is equal to one minus h, sorry, not h, it will be mc square by h nu, all right. And then we have c option, C option is given to you as the ratio of the magnitudes of momenta, the ratio of the magnitudes of momenta momenta of the required electron of the Required of the required electron, okay, and scattered photon and scattered photon uh, is is sine phi divided by sine theta, all right. So let me scroll it a little bit up. Now the D option is the change in photon wavelength, change in photon wavelength, okay. Change in photon wavelength is H by MC one minus two cos phi. So you can directly say which option is uh, incorrect without calculating even. And one more thing you have to uh, also take care of what is theta and what is phi here. Now the convention which we took, uh, this is uh, it's opposite, all right. The scattering angle uh, of uh, the photon is phi and the scattering angle of the required electron is theta, okay? In our case, it was opposite. So accordingly, we have to check uh, this uh, solution of this uh, question. Now, uh, one option is absolutely wrong just by looking at it, okay? Uh, which one is that you can tell me? D. Yeah, D option is incorrect, right? So this is incorrect because if you write down the change in wavelength, now have you copied the question? You can take a screenshot if you want to, all right. And uh, let's solve this problem. Okay, so uh, what you can do is you can draw the diagram according to the question uh, of the uh, this uh, Compton scattering. And so that you can have the, you can keep track of the angles and the momentas. Okay, so in this case, uh, uh, this the change in photon wavelength, let's uh, write this down. So change in photon wavelength will be what? Photon wavelength. Okay, this is equal to is H by MC, this will be one minus cos phi. Phi is what? Where the phi is the scattering angle of photon. Okay, so this, this is the answer for D option. This is the correct, option, uh, correct thing to write. Now uh, we have this thing, now initial energy is, 
inertial energy of photon is hc by lambda all right and the final energy the final energy of photon is given to be that it loses half of its energy okay so the it will be ha become half of the incident energy initial energy so this is hc by uh, 2 lambda all right now this we can write it as h nu by 2 or we can write down h nu equal to h nu dash now here nu dash is equal to nu by 2 all right nu dash uh, this uh, uh, notation is same consistent consistent with which we have taken uh, earlier nu dash is the uh, photon frequency of the scattered frequency photon all right uh, so in this case uh, we already know this thing that delta lambda is equal to uh, lambda dash uh, sorry uh, yeah lambda dash minus lambda is equal to h by the mass of the electron uh, so in this case it's given to be m so uh, let it let it be m 1 minus cos phi okay where phi is the scattering angle okay so don't get confused with the theory part which we discussed okay about the angle so if you write this down like this so we can write lambda as c by nu dash and this as c by nu this will give us h by mc and we have 1 minus cos phi all right now this if you uh, just put down the values here of the nu which we had derived here this is nu dash equal to nu by 2 uh, according to the question given to us uh, this gives us this result okay so we take the c's this side so this to converts to h by mc square so we have this result so we are trying to derive the first part okay so the first part says that this is 1 minus cos phi is equal to mc square by h nu okay this gives us the cos of phi ang phi angle this is 1 minus mc square by h nu if you check the options given to us this is the first option right so this is correct so the a option is correct so this is where we started solving the a part okay the first option is correct so this is correct okay now all right now the next thing is we have been asked that okay now this one will not be correct if if this is cos phi is this so we can find out uh, this sin theta uh, won't be this thing okay you this take it as a homework and find out try to find out what will be sin theta so take this option uh, for msq you should always explore all the options so take this as a homework uh, i am telling you that this is incorrect uh, just find out what sin theta will be all right now let's talk about the c option so it says the ratio of the magnitudes of moment of required electron in the scattered photon is sin theta sin phi by sin theta so just remember the derivations which we did if you uh, try to get the conservation of momentum along y axis you will get this ratio right so let's write this down so the c option for let's do the calculation for c option uh, c option that if you apply conservation of momentum conservation of momentum along y axis momentum along y axis along y axis now how uh, if somebody asked me that well, how should this click in mind okay so it's, it's a derivation of two three page two three lines long so you just have to remember that where can you get cos phi from of course the cos phi is there in the compton shift so you can start with that okay, you will get this result okay this was this was the important step here this was the important step this one and then using this thing we get this result all right now the conservation now uh, we already know this we did this two conservation of momentum along y and x axis x axis it's a it's a complicated equation uh, but in y axis uh, along y axis we have a clear ratio of the both the momentums so it, that's why we are using this one okay so this will give us this is h nu dash now remember this the scattering angle of uh, what is the scattering angle for uh, phi uh, the, uh, photon this is phi so we instead of cos in earlier which we mentioned Uh, uh the angle was uh, theta here we have using phi here according to the question okay so don't think that i gave you something uh, different in the other uh, in the theory part just that it's a matter of notation 
All right, so this is momentum pH. This is sine phi. All right, this is equal to uh, p sine theta. All right, so this gives us p by pH according to the question. This is equal to sine phi by sine theta. So if you see this, whether this is correct or not, so we are writing moment electron by uh, scattered photon with sine phi by sine theta. So this is correct. All right, this relation comes out to be whatever is given in the option. All right, so this is also correct. This is also correct. So these options are correct. Okay, and take this as this option as a homework. You know, just derive what sine theta could be, will be actually. Now let's talk about another question. And then we'll uh, give a homework problem and then we can uh, so, like sign off. Okay, so uh, the question says, the question says that uh, X rays of 20 electron volt energy, X rays of 20 kilo electron volt energy is scattered, energy is scattered Okay, uh, inelast inelastically, inelastically uh, from a carbon target, from a carbon target. The kinetic energy, the kinetic energy transferred transferred to the recoiling electron to the recoiling electron by photons by photons scattered at 90 degree scattered at 90 degree uh, with respect to the incident beam with respect to the incident beam all right is So the uh, in KV the option the, the unit is given KV. So the, the there are values given to you. You already know it. H is given to be uh, the Planck's constant with 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power. Uh, now when you do a numerical problem like this, uh, if you, the values are given to you, then use try to use those values because uh, they'll keep the ranges of the numerical answer to be within that range using these constants only. Okay, if you use whatever we know, uh, it might uh, th happen that it will uh, be out of range, uh, whatever they have decided as the range of the answer. So electron mass, okay, electron mass is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kilogram. And uh, electronic charge E is equal to 1.6. Now some, all the values are same, which we might be using, but one value is different, which is the Planck's constant, okay. So, okay, that might not cause a problem, uh, not much of a problem, but you have to be careful about this. This is jam 2016, all right. So just let's solve this and then I'll give you homework and then we'll sign off. So it says here, the X-rays of 20 electron volt energy scattered inelastically from a carbon target and uh, the kinetic energy transferred to the recoiling electron by photons scattered at 90 degree with respect to the incident beam is. So what is the kinetic, uh, kinetic energy which is being transferred to the uh, recoiling electron? So that is the, uh, uh, I just wrote the last statement in the theory part that the kinetic energy which is transferred to the electron by the photons is the energy which is lost by the photon, all right, after scattering. So at 90 degree, uh, what will happen here now? If uh, theta is given to me, now we are using our notation. Okay, theta is a scattering angle, which is of photon. In this uh, question, there is no mention of theta or phi. So we are using, using our own notation. 
So theta is equal to 90 degree. So delta lambda, the confidence shift will be what? Will be H uh, MEC uh, one minus cos uh, theta, all right, which gives us MEC. And this is one minus cos 90. And the answer is, is H by MEC. Now this is equal to the Compton wavelength for the electron. Okay, so this is uh, what we get as a shift. Now lambda dash. Now we are we are, try, we are trying to get the difference between the energy uh, of the two photons. Okay, the scattered one and the incident one. So this lambda, if we we try to find out the lambda, this is uh, given to be. What is the lambda given here? Okay, we need to calculate the lambda here. We do not have the lambda yet. Okay. So the, how will you calculate the lambda? So in this case, we have been given the energy of the X rays, okay? So X rays, the energy is given, E is equal to 20 kilo electron volt, okay? So E is equal to HC by lambda, or we can say that lambda is equal to HC by E, all right? So if you use this thing, the lambda, then we get one, two, four, instead of HC, we'll write uh, one, two, four, zero EV, nanometer divided by the energy. So energy is 20 into 10 to the power 3 EV. Okay, kiloton volt, this is given. Now if you solve this, uh, this becomes very straightforward calculation, which is 62. This is uh, 62 into 10 to the power uh, minus 12 meter. Okay, so it's a picometer here. Yeah? So if you use this here, so this is 62 into 10 to the power minus 12, and plus 2.43 into 10 to the power minus 12. Okay, so these are 14 meters. So this gives us around 62, uh, this becomes 64, right? This becomes 64.43 into 10 to the power minus 12. Minus 12 meter, okay? So we have the wavelength. Now we can find out the energy of the uh, scattered photon, which is HC by Lambda dash is equal to uh, 1240 EV nanometer divided by the wa wavelength, which is 64.43 into 10 to the power minus 12 meter. Okay, so if you do the calculation, you get 19.24 uh, kilo electron volt. Okay, now we want that what is the energy transferred to the uh, recoil electron. So this is kinetic energy of the electron is equal to the change in energy of the photon. So E minus E dash, which is 20 minus 19.24 uh, into 10 power three electron volt. So this gives us kinetic energy to be, because we have to report in kilo electron volt, we can write this as 0.76 kilo electron volt. So this is the answer to your question. Okay. Now, uh, you, some might, someone might ask that, okay, uh, this is, uh, in, uh, you said that the collision is a, a elastic collision and this, the scattering is said to be inelastic here. So what is going on here? Okay, so the thing is, uh, uh, there are two types, the two are types, you can divide it into two types of physicist. One is a cosmologist and the other one who has a nuclear physicist. Okay, they have different kind of uh, way of thinking about the experiments here, uh, the scattering and the collision part. But to, for you to not get confused, I'll define two quantities and uh, that will clear up things. There's one thing which is called inelastic scattering. Inelastic scattering, which says that in this kind of scattering, in this kind of scattering, the kinetic energy of the, the kinetic energy of the incident of the incident incident particle is not conserved incident particle is not conserved all right and this is the definition of inelastic scattering okay very straightforward that the if you calculate the kinetic energy of the incident particle before and after the scattering both will not be equal Okay, so that, that phenomena, wherever it happens, it's called an elastic scattering, okay? And if you talk about elastic collision, elastic collision, okay, in this case, 
this is something which is defined as this. It says that uh, the kinetic energy of the total system, total system, okay, uh, is conserved. Is conserved uh, as in Compton scattering. Okay, now this does uh, you can it is the Compton scattering is termed as inelastic scattering, uh, but the uh, the uh, the collision uh, here, uh, which is occurring, is the elastic one. Okay. So this is why it's uh, termed differently in each cases. All right. So the last question, which I'll give you, and then we'll sign off. Uh, you can take it as a homework. Okay. This says that. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, So the question says, this is a homework problem and very straightforward one. Okay, just for practice, the fractional increase, the fractional increase, fractional increase uh, in wavelength, in wavelength, uh, that leads to that leads to uh, a 75 percent that leads to a 75 percent loss of loss of photon energy photon energy all right in a compton collision in a compton collision all right so the options are collision is, there's no full stop here. There is, is. Okay, the first option is, the first option is 100%. What is happening to this? 100%. B option is, uh, three hundred percent. C option is seventy five percent, and D option is one fifty percent. So I'll give you the answer to this. Okay, this is uh, around three. This is answer is three hundred percent. Okay, this answer is three hundred percent. So you just try it as a homework, and uh, let's sign off here. All right. So. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Thank you, sir. All right. Take care.